In this video we're going to talk about post-production in V-Ray for Rhino and we already saw some of the effects that we can apply to our renderings using the V-Ray Asset Editor. So for example we can also see these effects here. Some of them are the depth of field effect. When you want to create the focus and out of focus effect in your picture and also you can do some of these effects in software for post-production like Photoshop or for example if you want to do animation after effects and similar software but some of those you can also find them here and another one we saw is vignetting which is applying the darker corners now all these effects you can use it here but you can also manage them later on and some you need to place it right here, right away. So this is the case also of the denoiser. Then you can turn it on and off here in the post-production, but you need to apply it. And so basically we, we went through all these different settings and some of those are similar to post-production effects. For example, if you go here in the first render tab, you can see that you can update the effects rarely or only at the end of the rendering or often during the rendering. This is a choice that you can do. So these are not really post-production but also let's say inside the production of the render. And now let's move into the V-Ray frame buffer because this is where we're gonna spend much time. Now make sure that you are using depth of field here and the vignetting and also, there is something that we can change, again, in post-production, which is the camera exposure. So, so we can work with the exposure and also the brightness and contrast and darkness also in the post-production. So you can adjust a little bit what you did here for the camera basic settings and advanced settings. Okay, now the last thing I want to do before I uh, get here it's I want to also use some channels, some render elements. Now this is to render out not only the, the final image, but you can extract from the render a lot of different channels. So I have applied here, for example, light mix, which we used also in the videos about lightning. And this is really, really useful. Probably it's the best that you could insert here so make sure that you have that and also we can manage reflection so this is kind of an effects manager basically so you can click here and go to the render elements and continue to add different stuff here for example the material id color could be useful if you want to change colors or if you want to select real quick objects when you are again in photoshop or something like that. Now I, I believe that the most of these can, are useful, well you can use them also here but are useful also in, in post-production software. We can see here also a lighting analysis, we can see for example the specular and the reflection and the reflection, the self-illumination and all this stuff here. We have a lot of stuff we can isolate and manage and then change perhaps okay so let's add some render elements and this is all we need to do now we can move here to the v-ray frame buffer now i already have some of the render elements here but uh, i need to re-render if i want to see the latest render elements that i've added now where do i see the recently added render elements or all the render elements in this image in particular which is the one of the the one that I have previously created and you can see also here there is kind of a history of adding effects on top of other effects on top of other effects so to you can use the history panel to see all your process all your different steps in arriving to a certain result and you can go back and you can say okay let me see what's the difference between this one and this one so you can make comparisons and so on so this is why it's pretty useful 
and you need to activate this usually it's not activated by default so to activate this we need to go into the options V-Ray frame buffer settings and here you will find different panels that co could also be useful for example here you have the shortcuts with which could be useful to manage better here the V-Ray frame buffer but let's go into the topic here which is the history so first of all to activate this you need to enable of course and then you use you need to save your renderings either in the project path so where you are saving your project or into a folder which you can specify right here so you can click here in my case I've created a folder and there you go so all the all the different renderings that I'm gonna do here are gonna be saved here as images that I can also load later on so they're gonna be stored securely stored otherwise each time you do a render if you want to save it well you do have other autosave settings but otherwise you need to click here and save it so we can also here turn autosave on and also we can check or leave this unchecked which is going to save not only the completed renders but also the others and in my case I prefer to save everything so everything can be useful to study the global illumination or lighting setup and so on here we have also size and the ratio so that's save and close and then you're going to have your history now once you have your history you can start to automatically save here all these steps that you're doing so this is a situation without any effect and then I will show you also how to add all the other effects. Now, the layers or channels, where are they? They're basically here. So you can see here, I can check the denoiser pass or I can check the portal, which is one of my lights. So I can see also the lights here. I can check the noise level. This is really interesting because you can actually see how much noise do you have in the scene and you can solve that and then go back here and study how you solve the noise and so on and also you have the the focus amount reflections and refractions effects results and so you can see here I will all the render elements that I saved before are gonna appear here now I'm gonna launch a new render so we can see all the process from zero so let's want to use another view here okay I'm gonna use that one and let's start all over so I will I can also delete everything here so I can select my thumbnails 